Our next speaker, uh, Rick Housley, uh, he's going to talk about a uh, reverse engineering embedded systems and uh, memory mapped I.O. accesses uh, with uh, Ghidra. So take it away. All right, awesome. Uh, good afternoon, guys. Like he said, my name is Rick Housley. I'm going to be talking about Perch. Uh, and as he mentioned, it's a Ghidra plugin uh, for adding some memory mapped I.O. functionality. Um, right now, I work at United Technologies. I'm part of the product security red team on aviation platforms. Uh, previous to that, uh, I worked at Red Balloon Security where I did a whole bunch of electromagnetic fault injection uh, research and, and more recently, uh, Thrang Recrat, the big uh, Cisco uh, root of trust disclosure. Uh, and actually, if you stick around in like an hour, John is gonna be talking about that. All right, so what are we gonna see today? Uh, we're gonna do a quick review of Ghidra for those of you who aren't as familiar. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about memory map IO uh, and why diversity is actually really painful in this regard. Um, you know, the, the current methods and tools for, um, you know, reverse engineering hardware and dealing with peripherals right now, uh, and then kind of the solutions uh, that, that I came up to solve that. Um, I'll briefly mention formal grammar and we'll see how it's actually really cool and despite having formal in the name, uh, it's not quite as scary. Um, and then at some point I'll, I'll hopefully show a working demo and, and talk about extending the extension and, and some of the future work that can come out of um, tools like this. All right, so cool, Ghidra. For, uh, for those of you who have never heard of Ghidra, uh, Ghidra is NSA's kind of open source, uh, now open source equivalent um, of IDA Pro. Um, it's really great and really cool in that it has a full decompiler built in, it supports a whole bunch of processors, um, and it has a really fantastic scripting uh, and plugin uh, architecture that allows you to augment it instead of bugging Ilfoc uh, about something new. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Uh, it was released in March. Uh, also it has undo, which is kind of magical, um, even though Ida now apparently has undo. Uh, so this is what it looks like, a, a typical view of it. You have your, uh, your disassembly. Uh, you have your, uh, you know, your typical graph view that you see in Ida, uh, and, and then, like I mentioned, a really great feature uh, is the decompiler, decompiler that it has um, as well. I'm not going to really dive into the basics of Ghidra, but if you're interested and, and want to jump in, I would highly recommend this talk from Alexi and Jeremy. Uh, they do a really great job of kind of easing uh, that learning curve into uh, developing and uh, reverse engineering uh, with Ghidra. What I'm going to talk about is this new window uh, that got, that, uh, that's an add-on, it's called Perch, uh, and that allows you to kind of explore um, black box hardware um, and their kind of peripheral interactions. Um, but before we see that demo and how that works, uh, let's talk a little bit about memory mapped I.O. Um, so unlike, you know, typical OS uh, reverse engineering, when you're dealing with embedded systems, you often really care about the peripherals. Uh, and those peripherals are often mapped directly in memory, um, so, you know, the processor and I.O. devices are mapped using memory addresses, so if you want to flip a pin, uh, you're going to write to some address in memory. If you want to set up some peripherals for SPI or UART uh, interactions, those are all just uh, directly in memory that, that you need to, uh, to write to or, or, or read from. Uh, so this is what memory maps look like when you're reading tons and tons of data sheets. Um, and the one thing that I really want to point out here is that these are uh, both STM32s, the same, you know, family-ish. Um, and they have completely different memory maps. Um, and that's kind of where this complexity and why memory mapped I.O. is really hard when you use tools like Ghidra or, or Ida um, is they have a really great support for the core. Um, they have, you know, all the disassembly for ARM and PowerPC and everything like that. Um, but then when you're dealing with these different peripherals that are being written to, um, they can't support every single processor. Uh, and so what you end up having is just a really poorly uh, kind of shown uh, peripheral interactions in firmware, and, and we're going to take a look at that uh, right here. So this is actually, uh, the firmware you're going to be seeing uh, is some uh, vaporware, it's, it's uh, some IoT vape firmware. Um, so uh, it's, it's using this little NRF uh, ARM core, um, and this is what it, it kind of looks like in IDA when you first start scrolling through, when you first open it up. And what you see here is, uh, well really nothing is kind of the problem. Uh, it's really hard to tell w w what's going on. So the first thing that you'd want to do is you want to go open up that data sheet, find their kind of memory map, and start augmenting um, Ghidra's memory mapping, where you add the peripheral chunks. And now, after that, Ghidra is going to start recognizing, all right, this is an address in the peripheral region. Um, but this is still pretty useless. 
Uh, so, so you see up top, there's, it's uh, loading or writing to some address up the 4C1000 range. Um, and so then run back to the data sheet, uh, read you know, a good 60 pages, find your memory map, and then you see, all right, cool, this is dealing with a temperature sensor uh, that's built into this chip. Uh, and, and then for every single one of these, uh, so then you can go label that, uh, find all the registers, label all those registers, and you know, there's you know, dozens per each one of these peripherals. So it kind of becomes a major pain uh, to do this for one thing. And then when you get a new project or you want to start something new, you have to do it all over again. Uh, and then you have to do it all over again every time. And, it, and it's kind of a pain. Uh, and somebody very smart realized on the uh, Ghidra GitHub, they're like, hey, for ARM chips, uh, there's this great thing called an SVD file. And what an SVD file is, is it's just a description of all the peripherals for a certain processor. Uh, and so they're like, hey, somebody should write a parser and parse this format and then augment Ghidra with it. Um, and, and somebody beat me to that, and that was Thomas Roth, who's speaking next. Uh, and he released this loader, which is essentially perch for, for ARM things. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, and, and I would check this out. This is uh, open source and available right now, unlike Perch, which is going through open source review. Um, but unfortunately, I don't always have the privilege of working with ARM stuff. Sometimes I have to work with uh, kind of random architectures and PowerPC. And these SVD files are not uh, created for things other than ARM, and they're not available from the manufacturer. So um, I kind of need a different solution uh, than uh, the SVD parser that Thomas Roth uh, supplies. So I, on a side, side uh, tangent, back when I was working at Red Balloon doing some development, uh, we used this amazing tool called a Lauterbach. Uh, this is the Lauterbach Trace32 software. Um, and it's really expensive, but it, it's expensive for a reason, and that's because it has amazing support uh, for everything. It, it's a JTAG debug. You plug it in. You can step through uh, all your instructions. And there's this one magical little window uh, where at any given point, you can just see all of the peripherals and you know what, what's going on in them, and it's just it's really clean and nice. And this is something you kind of write off as like, oh, that's just cool. Um, but then when you're using tools like Ghidra, you're like, wait, I want that, but in Ghidra. Um, and like I said, they support uh, Lauterbach supports pretty much every processor. There's uh, 942 supported families uh, that includes you know all your ARM chips, that NRF chip, you know PowerPC, everything. And, and I say families because memory map I/O change is not just uh, in your family, but from processor to processor uh, within a family. So this includes, if you have a family, all of those other subprocessors within that family, that whole STM32F whatever line uh, underneath it as well. So how, do, how does Lauterbach do it? How do they have uh, all this support? Well, they painstakingly work with the manufacturers to uh, create these, uh, these peripheral files. And this is, this is what a peripheral file looks like, a little similar to the SVD ones, but uh, a lot more painful, actually. Um, but they, they have great support of even uh, at the bit level for in a register what each bit means. Um, these are massive, you know, 100,000 lines of uh, really structured text. And unfortunately, uh, they, they do some wonky stuff, too. I don't, I don't know if you can see this here. But they decide to have, like, fully evaluatable expressions uh, built into this document. Um, so. That's where this tool comes in. So what, what is Perch? It's this peripheral file conversion helper tool uh, that, that integrates with Ghidra. It takes that peripheral file, you know, massive 100,000 line file. Uh, it uh, then parses that file uh, using some formal grammar. Um, and then, you know, you, you, you can run some, if you're interested in certain peripherals, you can filter those out, that kind of thing. It, it translates it into intermediary, uh, and then you can load that into Ghidra. Um, hopefully, at some point, you could also load that into IDA and augment it that way. All right, I mentioned uh, formal grammars. Um, so this is the how the parsing works. So uh, because this file is heavily nested, doing a kind of line by line approach of parsing, um, I kind of needed a, a better way of doing that. And, and I found that formal grammars are, are fantastic for this. And you basically take this specification from uh, you know Lauterbox PDFs, and then you code that uh, into this kind of form you see on the left, which is kind of describes all the different possibilities in a line. Um, and then that uh, gets, you generate a, parsing, a parser from their parsing engine, and then you end up with this syntax tree. And then you can have an interpreter go and run through the syntax tree and generate um, kind of the, the, that intermediary representation uh, for, for Ghidra after that. 
So you see this, this input line on the left. It's some of that crazy math that they love putting in all their files. Uh, and then it, it converts that down, all down to that tree. You can then interpret this and evaluate it to actually just the number that it's supposed to be, and then go and label that in Ghidra. All right, so that's, I think, enough talking for, for now. I'm going to uh, show you a little bit about what Perch actually looks like uh, in Ghidra. And we're going to start off actually in the same spot um, that I had shown you earlier um, with, with that vape firmware and that, that temperature sensor region. So, oh, this is hard. Uh, yeah, that's the right one. Let me see if I can mirror here. Uh, maybe not. All right, so what, what you see here is you see perch on the left. And this is a peripheral tree of all of the different peripherals that are included in the NRF uh, firmware. I mean, uh, the NRF chip, sorry. Um, and so we can navigate this tree, uh, and you'll see that these are all the peripherals. And it, it's colored by utilization. Um, and so let's jump to, well, uh, where was my good example? So the MPU, for example. Uh, in this, there's, hey, that's kind of neat, actually, from a security perspective. Disable protection mechanisms in debug mode. Cool. So what we can do is we can just follow that to where that's written. Uh, and you can see it's kind of now cleanly uh, written in memory uh, or in, in a disassembly here. And so we can walk through all these different peripherals and, and start to get a really high level idea of what certain functions are doing. Initially, if you were to look at this function, you just see a bunch of you know, data uh, access the use. But now you see, OK, this is actually setting up you know, some clock stuff. Um, let's see here. What was one of the good examples? So you can see, all right, this is the function that's you know, setting up and starting the watchdog and, and all that fun stuff here. Uh, and then another, from like a very high level perspective, this, this vape, I don't own this vape. I just have the firmware. And so I really wanted to be able to see, OK, so what, what does the even hardware look like? And you can get a really quick idea of like, all right, well, they're not using SPI for anything. Uh, they are using the temperature sensor. You can go, oh, I wonder if they're using the temperature sensor for you know, the actual vape product or, or, or what have you. So uh, that, that's Perch in a nutshell. Um, in terms of the demo, let me, here, here's some you know, great examples as well of uh, what's happening behind me. Uh, you know, the RNG getting set up. And so, um, so what, what comes after this? Oh, can I bring this back? That's the wrong one. All right, cool. So this is that, the, the cleaned up, perched version of that uh, initial uh, shot that I showed you. Uh, some of the features that it sports, uh, the short and long register descriptions, so you can really cleanly see, like you saw, um, all of those, those accesses. The, the tree hierarchy is actually really nice, because Lauterbach does a great job of nesting peripherals. So um, in, well, in, in some cases, you'll have you know, debug registers nested with another uh, debugging for some specific sub-peripheral. Um, and then, like I mentioned, the colorization is really helpful for seeing kind of a high-level overview. It's what, what is happening uh, in uh, OK. So uh, now that we have this, uh, other than helping with uh, you know, general reverse engineering efforts, what kind of like other things, now that we have this new layer in Ghidra, can we do? And what's great about Ghidra is you have these plugins. This is a plugin or extension. And then you can script on top of them as well. So one of the scripts that uh, I developed that is now on top of the perch layer is um, finding setup functions. So a, a really quick heuristic for finding a setup function is you see, all right, I want the one function that does the maximum number of writes to a peripheral family, right? So uh, SPI flash, you'll say. Um, let's find the, the function that sets that up go through all the different functions and find the one with all the writes to that uh, peripheral. And so you can immediately label uh, in Ghidra all of the different setup functions for all the different peripherals uh, really quickly. Um, what else can you kind of do with this kind of infrastructure built in? So this is a terrible picture of a control flow graph um, that you'll pretty normally see in something like Ida if, or you know, uh, and Ghidra in a really terrible view. Um, but what you can do now is you can also add in your uh, peripheral interaction. So in, in this diagram, what you see is all of the colored dots are the peripherals. Uh, and you can start to immediately notice, like see this tree over here. That's pretty obviously a setup function. Um, and I actually have a better shot on this next one. 
uh, you can find some really interesting stuff. Like this is the radio, and it's also looking at like one-time programmable memory. So hey, is this doing some key stuff? Is it just setting up the ID, that kind of thing? Um, and this is without looking at a single line of disassembly. You can start getting these kind of insights, uh, which is something I enjoy. <laughs> All right, um, so what, what should you walk away thinking uh, after this, this brief little talk here? Uh, memory mapped I.O. is kind of a hard thing to deal with given the massive diversity of all these processors. Uh, fortunately, tools like Thomas Roth's um, SVD parser and Perch are hopefully going to make that uh, a lot easier. Uh, Thomas Roth's tool is available today. Uh, you can find it on Twitter. Uh, Perch is going open through open source review, so that will be also available. Uh, those peripheral files I mentioned um, are also entirely available on Lauderbox's website. They're not proprietary. You don't have to buy their uh, equipment to access them, and they're for now still online. Um, the, the kind of general big picture things that I think you, you should take away is um, the value in Ghidra uh, is more than it just being a cool hardware reverse engineering tool that's pretty equivalent to IDA. It's actually, in my opinion, the ability to extend it so much further. Uh, and, and it's really well-documented foundation. Uh, it's just great bones to add on to um, from a reverse engineer's perspective. Uh, and then you can do some pretty neat stuff with graphing uh, outside of Ghidra and, and get pretty cool insights without touching... Uh, touching the assembly. Um, I didn't really talk that much about it, but formal grammars, I do want to give them a shout out, are, are a lot less scary than, than they seem, and they're incredibly useful for doing you know, large text parsing um, quickly and, and accurately. And uh, yeah, I think that sums it up. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, please let me know, or if you want to know what this spirally thing is, find me, well, I guess, in the beer garden after. All right, let's thank Rick. And we'll do a Q&A as usual outside. <laughs>